This is an update this week, isn't it? Our first story. That is. Last week, just a few hours before we filmed the show, the Russians sent off their Phobos Grunt uh, mission that was going to land. The Phobos Grunt. Yes. Well, Grunt is Russian for soil or something similar. Okay. And it was, you know, their first big interplanetary mission since 96. And it separated from its boosters. It was a pretty launch. And two hours later, the engines were supposed to fire. Uh oh. They did not. It is currently stuck in low Earth orbit, about half the height to the space station. Oh, no. Yeah, they only well, have it didn't about. Even, it didn't even like make it half. It didn't even like make it out of our own backyard. No, it was it was supposed to go into this low parking orbit, fire off its engines, go into a big elliptical orbit around the Earth, and then just a few hours after that, shoot off its engines to head off to Mars. So, um, are they able to do any kind of fixing once it's up there? Like, can they connect? They to the are computer trying. System? Uh, originally, they thought they'd only have a few days to fix this issue. Oh, that really? it would because it would then fall back. That it would fall back down, and they were worried because it's got, it just launched. It had enough fuel to get its to Mar- get itself to Mars. Oh, what kind of fuel do you know? It's I know one of them is hydrazine, and the oh, other one is just ni- a nuclear reactor. Not a nuclear reactor. There is a small amount of um, what is it? There's a small amount of nuclear material on board. Oh, it wasn't okay. enough to run it. It was just enough to run a little experiment. It's got a pretty short half-life. Um, but the theory is that if they can't contact it, the problem is it's so low that they only have about nine minutes on each orbit to try to talk to it. Because it's moving so fast, they can't track it. Oh, wow. So they're having to use their radio, turn down the volume all the way, you know, because these are instruments meant to send signals all the way to mars Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so they're having to crank it down as much as they can then you kind of point it into the one area of the sky kind of move it as fast as they can to track for the seven minutes that they get each time they haven't been able to contact it yet um there was some confusion about how long they had there was early early uh, Guesses that said they only had a few days before it would just come out, down and this battery went out. Isn't kind of one of the two, one of the, uh, you might actually be able to bunk, debunk this for me, but I had heard that one of the interesting facts about this little story here is that originally the first people to spot this thing just hanging out above Earth were mm-hmm. amateurs. They weren't That's any, right. That is true. Oh. They were. The, they lost complete telemetry on the object. The Russians did, and they had. They were looking for it. They were trying to figure out what happened to it, and some amateur astronomers in South America spotted it. And they said, "Hey guys, look over here." It seems so like. Then, it seems like the press sometimes delights a little bit in reporting on Russian space agency catastrophes. Do you pick up on that a little bit? Like, there's just a catastrophes bit of, in general. Yeah, I mean, space catastrophes are generally explosiony. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this so one was more like the Excelsior in Star Trek Three. Really, just kind of got there and then just kind of pew, 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 puttered out. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Luckily, the Russians got a little bit more time um, for no apparent reason. It thrusters went off a little bit and it got into a higher, more stable orbit. Yeah, well, really, they just fired. <clears throat> yeah, they just sort of fired something. Some onboard computer told it to fire itself. So they've got to the first of December to be able to salvage it enough to still get to Mars. There's a certain window of opportunity that they have to where the planets are aligned just so that it could actually make it there. Oh, that's what, so, so it's not just a matter of falling back down to Earth. It's also a matter of the position of Mars, of course. Yeah. So they've got to the beginning of December to tr- still try to salvage it enough to do that. But at this point, there is no telemetry. Um, they think it'll be early January. If they can't, it'll be early January when it comes back down. Mm. It'll probably explode with all the fuel on board. Will ignite and it'll just explode in a giant ball of fire, and then wow. most likely land in the ocean. Whatever is, whatever survives. But hopefully they'll be able to contact it. 
Um, yeah, talk about it, it frustrating, you know, the contacting the part. Just this, that whole delay that's built into the whole process just due to the, like you said, the fact that it's moving so fast and the limitations yeah. there with sending the signals. How frustrating to be working, you know, every minute trying to save this thing, mm-hmm. to get it out of orbit and off to Mars, and you can only try something every few minutes. And then you have yeah, to wait. Yeah, there's seven minutes every orbit that they get to try. You know, and it's whatever signal they send to it is got to be done in seven minutes. Right. They've got to download everything they can at that point. So any, any instructions they need to send have to be able to upload and, mm-hmm. and any f- diagnostic information they wanted to download to determine what have happened the last attempt also has to be done in that same window of time. Yeah, if they want to reboot and get the, the reboot log, they have to send it, maybe get it this time around or maybe download it next time. Hmm. So there's every country that I know NASA's tracking it or the... American government is tracking it, and there's various agencies listening for it or tracking it, and they're all kind of sending the Russians what they can. Right, right. Yeah, hopefully, because people around the other, and maybe people in other areas of the world will be able to communicate it for, at different times, right? So while the Russians wouldn't be able to signal it, maybe another agency at, another, at the other end of the world would be able to? Is that what you mean? That is a theory. I haven't, oddly enough, I haven't actually seen anything that shows that they would be, that they are doing that. Now, I know in the past there, there's big radio ta- dishes in Australia, so there are radio dishes in various countries that they could utilize. It just may not be, you know, they have the, the right signal coding in one place, and it just doesn't make sense for them to fly across the world all over the world just keep all their scientists in one place maybe that's what they want to do yeah okay in case they so they have all the heads in one room in case they can talk to it at one point it would almost seem like they should also be able to just have and of course i'm I'm sure this is there's some real good reason why they can't do this but it would also just seem like maybe they could have i don't know a satellite in orbit that could they could relay off of that would have a more constant connection with this thing it's possible but the problem is that all the satellites up there are just up there to do their mission. You know, so... Yeah, they're not just sitting around with, like... They're not just sitting around waiting for <laughs> you to, say, bounce off and talk to my... And it still would be a similar issue. It's that it's in a low orbit. It's moving quite fast. It's yeah, I don't tracking think you've that. seen enough movies, Mars. They can do that, no problem. I've oh, seen, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've seen that. Now, yeah. I know one thing that they were talking about also is having the space station crew... Um, try to aim some cameras where it might pass underneath to see if they can take some visual pictures from their perspective. Oh, that would be pretty neat. Too bad they don't have like some sort of handy space shuttle or something like that that they could just fly up there and look at <laughs> stuff with. No. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, any other thoughts on, uh, on this here story? No, it's sort of an ongoing thing. We'll just kind of have to see how it goes and I, you know i would ideally i think the best case scenario here of course obviously would be that they could begin to communicate it because this is totally completely selfish i admit that but i was looking forward to tracking the progress of this thing on mm-hmm. the show yeah i, I was looking I, for there's I, this there's a u.s rover launching next week so you know it was these ongoing things and this mission in particular had the russian one that they were going to land on the mars moon and bring something back. It had a Chinese orbiter. It had planetary society stuff. There were various things that were going on with it. So, sounds like it was going to be. Keep my fingers cool. crossed for the Russians. Hopefully, it'll work out for them. But yeah. it's it's so hard to say with some of these things. And what a huge loss of financial investment if they can't get it going because you know they you know I'm, yeah. billions I'm sure I don't know what it would be it'd be in rubles I guess but it would be tons of money. Yeah, it's it's money. It's time. It's hardware. It's lost science. Yeah. It it's hurt. It hurts when this kind of a thing happens. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Should we move on? Mm-hmm. We'll update folks when we get more information too. So if we if we have good news next week, you'll hear it here first. Don't- 